I'm the Applied Technology Specialist for Wedding and Dispersing Additives, Michelle Gabriel Caldwell. Welcome to the module on phosphoric and carboxylic acid esters. I want to start with an explanation of the wash burn equation. Wetting and dispersing additives can be defined as substances which are designed to reduce the contact angle between the pigment and the binder solution. This will help accelerate the penetration speed of the liquid into the agglomerate structure. The surfactant structure comprising a polar, hydrophilic, and structural elements along with nonpolar and hydrophobic structural elements are combined in one molecule. And because of this very unique complex structure, these compounds are interface active. And so therefore, wetting and dispersing additives migrate to the pigment binder solution interface and assist in that dispersion. Why is this important? I'll address that as we get into the actual additives themselves. Carboxylic acid esters are the most common acid ester produced worldwide since they occur naturally. Phosphoric acid esters are usually derivatives of urea urethanes and are also great as wetting and dispersing agents. These are very simple structures that are intended to work extremely well with stabilizing inorganic pigments, extenders, and titanium dioxide. Phosphoric acid esters aren't the sexiest of the additive group, or aren't the most exciting, but they do get the job done. Titanium dioxide is considered one of the simplest types of pigments to disperse. The thought process is that it is extremely easy to grind and therefore many companies do not use wetting and dispersing additives. However, the process of grinding still requires good flow and movement in that process to ensure proper dispersion. Additives like phosphoric acid esters and carboxylic acid esters can aid in this dispersion process by utilizing the Washburn equation. Most individuals feel that particle size distribution is only determined by the equipment used. And that's not 100% true. It's also determined by the media, use the amount, the actual um, type and volume, the compatibility in the system, and as well, the additives selected. Um, choice of those additives are going to be critical in determining how well a pigment is dispersed. But stabilization is the key. And sometimes that's actually even more tricky when dealing with wetting and dispersing additives for titanium dioxide, since most manufacturers of TiO2 use different surface treatments. Sometimes they're acidic, sometimes they're basic, sometimes they're neutral. And this makes the decision as to which additive to use even more difficult. One of the things that BIC has done in terms of evolving in, in new products along the way was to introduce a product like Dispervic 118 that worked independent of the surface treatment of the titanium dioxide. Stabilizing TiO2 is most critical, particularly in systems that utilize a white base. Tinting formulas, systems, pigment concentrate systems, all of these work under the usage of a base. And if the stabilization of titanium dioxide is not taken as seriously as the more complicated colors, well, then the overall effect will be diminished. And the delta E 
for the issues in the titanium dioxide will also show up in the colorants as well. As one starts to scavenge from the other, uh, even more problems will occur. Phosphoric acid esters have an excellent result in matting agents, in organic pigments, and of course, titanium dioxide, as well as fillers. Carboxylic acid esters have a variety of offerings as well, based on polarity and molecular weight at big. Like I said, the group of phosphoric acid esters and carboxylic acid esters may not be as exciting as all the other additives, but in a world of colors, white bases are the foundation. And if they're using titanium dioxide, any extenders or any fillers, they need to be wetted properly. I invite you to explore all the other chemistries in the different learning modules for complementary information. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Bye.